You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan, I bit my tongue like a week ago, and it's making me talk differently sometimes, and sometimes on on certain vowels. (laughs) And when I swallow, it feels like I have a sore throat, but I don't. What the hell, man? I know. You guys are bored out of your mind. Not a way to start the podcast, but... (laughs) Don't do that if you have to talk for a living, guys. Oh, my gosh. I know, man. I have a, a, a tendency to just bite my tongue. I should bite my tongue more often. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, the no, stuff no, I no. say. Hey, hey, all right. How are you? Hey, lady. Uh, hey, this weekend I'm going to be in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Steel City Con. You got to go. It's going to be a riot. I mean, Chevy Chase is going to be there. Beverly D'Angelo. Uh, you got to go. I'm going to be there with Kristen Kruk. It's going to be fun. You got to go. Go on Twitter. Go on Instagram. Get your tickets. We'll see you there. Um and we're doing a show. Stage it. Go to stageit.com, S T A G E I T.com, or you can go to sunspin.com and get tickets to see our show. They're, they're pretty much free, but we're doing a Christmas show on Sunday, December 18th, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to play some music from the new album, from the old album from Left on Laurel, maybe a Christmas song or two. We're going to be jolly. We hope you join us for our Christmas special uh, December 18th. Also, go to sunspin.com. Right now, you can get this the new album out. It's out now, but it's not streaming yet. So if you want to keep sake, get a cool CD. If you want it signed, we got shirts, we got uh, T-shirts, uh, mugs, calendars. Go to sunspin.com, get all that. You could also book the band. And I'm on Cameo for the holidays. That's it for me. Uh, we got a great guest today. Uh, make sure you follow us on our socials, Ryan. At Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. That's it. Yeah. We got a great guest today. I mean, Sam Yeager. I didn't know a lot about him. And it's amazing how much you learn. I fell in love with this guy. He's amazing. I mean, uh, Devil in Ohio, um, The Handmaid's Tale. He's done so much, been in a lot of movies. You're going to recognize him. You see me, I know that guy. What a great story he has to tell. I know Ryan mm-hmm. really enjoyed this, especially. I text Sam, I think, after and said, Ryan really liked this. It was good. Uh, yeah, you don't always yeah. like stuff as much as I do. I liked this one a lot. You did. Yeah. So let's get inside of Sam Yeager. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Ryan, you're going to be right here with me. I'm going to be right here. Does it make make you uncomfortable that Ryan's right there with you? No, it's just lovely. (laughs) He won't won't bite. It's varying levels of comfort between guests. Please don't. (laughs) Sometimes sometimes people call him out. I haven't been bitten (laughs) since this morning, so if you do, just (laughs) bite me on my right arm instead of my left. My six-year-old usually attacks that side, so... Who, who uh, has called you out, Ryan, on the podcast? Who's like, you know, made you part of the podcast? It's generational, I will tell you. Is it really? It's old, older, the older guys. Jason, uh, Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick. Won't, won't J- recognize uh, you? No, they, no, they take full notice of Who's me. Who's this we'll, guy? We'll not stop, What's like, your name? Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony Michael Hall. Pete Holmes did. Pete, Pete Holmes, Holmes. Yes, yes. He, he's talked to you a Younger lot. Guy, but yeah, but he's, uh, he's also just large so i think it was just right <laughs> in, <laughs> yes. within his wingspan yes did apato really never know he was not just really minding his own yeah you were yeah. hoping he would have no he did not he's a big fan but you were hoping he would have you know kind of called yeah, you he rejected little, my but. pilot he did no. <laughs> to hell with him <laughs> to hell with that guy i don't have a pilot he'll never work in this town again <laughs> bastard um he's one of the nicest guys it's always good and you know I, you like just meeting you you're walking up the street, and I'm like, you know, you could have parked in the driveway, but I don't have your number because your publicist, of course, or your agent, they didn't, you know. Yeah. I should have said park in the driveway, but, you know, then you're walking up. You're kind of, what, what kind of cheap podcast is this? I got Not with that sweet the ride street. in the drive. I, was gonna, like I wasn't going to compete with that. It's a new Ooh. truck, man. Yeah. That is a new electric a truck. I do love it. I'm happy for you. Do you- and <laughs> the you. world. More people like you and driving obnoxiously large cars that don't <laughs> pollute. I mean, it doesn't pollute. No. Yeah. It's all electric. Yeah. It's fantastic. Do you still like, uh, I mean, you're like in your Mm forties, you're married, you have four kids. Yeah. Do you still have certain things that you're like a, a, like a boy still like you like, you're like things you're like, you're like, do you like any kind of toys or memorabilia or the, cause Uh, you look around my house, you obviously see that. So it's awesome. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the bachelor. Yeah. You know? Well, I got, you know, it's, uh, 
man, that's a good question. I keep, I keep, uh, I keep trying to make movies, and when I start to make movies, I always end up buying a, an old car. And so I right now, for this one indie film that I'm kind of in the early stages of, I was like, you know, this this character has a specific car he needs to drive, and so I went out and met this hippie out in Altadena who was selling a 1965 white Mustang that was so beat up. It's like, you know, he found it in, you know, in Lompoc with like a paint can stuck to the hood. And, <laughs> right. and I was like, well, this is perfect for, you know, but it stayed in my driveway for a very long time. So I'm a, I'm a, a I guess, a, not a, re a reluctant car collector, but an accidental car collector, because that right. will come and sit. And and I did a feature film my first 12 years ago where uh, the- Take me home. Yeah. The character gets into a cab and talks the cabbie into driving her across the United States. And I was like, well, I'm just going to buy a cab. So we bought a cab, the crew and I, like the, the week before we started shooting. Actually, we started shooting. We didn't even have the cabs. And then we finally got it. And we drove it all the way across the country. It had 325,000 miles on it. For and the film, you actually the, drove this actually, cab. The crew went across the country yeah. with, it, with you. Yeah. Yeah. Six, uh, six crew members and my wife and I. And uh, yeah. So after that experience, I had, you know, I just drove the taxi cab around for a couple of years and, and. You, know, you kept the, the taxi. Yeah, it was my main transport, you know, around town. And it had the writing on it and all that stuff? <laughs> yeah. In fact, one time I went to a meeting at Sony, and I was driving around the parking lot. I was late for this thing, and I'm driving around. This woman stops the car. This is in the Sony, you know, four-story parking lot. And she goes, I roll down the window. She goes, a a a can you take me to my car? <laughs> and I go, of course. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a real cab driver. She, I'm a, I'm just going to a, she goes, oh, you're an actor <laughs> in a taxi cab. Okay. Well, <laughs> can you take me to my car anyway? And I said, yeah, sure. Hop in. You did. So I drove this woman around like six floors. She couldn't figure out where her car was. And I dropped her off and, uh, you know, and then was even later to the, the meeting, but, uh, that's hilarious. Worth it. I mean, yeah. just to keep your taxi and driving a taxi all around town. Yeah. And how old were you? This was 12 years ago. Yeah, it was 11 yeah, years. It was, it was, yeah, I think I was, did I have, yeah, I was I was 30 something, early 30s. I'll tell you, it is, I, I, I actually directed a, a little independent raunchy comedy that, you know, didn't cost a ton of money to make. And I wrote it, directed, starred in it, just like you. Yeah. And when I read that you did this and Take Me Home and your wife is in it, Amber, Yeah. I thought, I got to ask him how, I mean, because this, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I don't know how Truly. I survived. Everybody was talking to me, trying to talk me out of it. They're like, you won't have enough energy to move. No. You'll be so exhausted. You won't. And there were a couple of days where I thought, I'm not, I'm, I'm saying this. It sounds like I'm sure. kidding. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. I thought I was going to just collapse and they're going to bring me to the hospital. Yeah. There's an enormous sense of panic. It's one thing. It's funny because a couple of years later, I directed an episode of Parenthood. Yeah. And, um, in this one day where we had a process trailer, we were shooting the, you know, interiors of a car with this giant, you know, the car is on a giant truck bed. And, you know, at one point we turn around and the, the, the energy of the car collapses, you know, the, the, the truck, uh, uh, the electricity just goes out. The car shuts down. We're mid U-turn and everybody in the crew is flipping out. Oh my gosh. We, I mean, we, this is crazy. We got to move this stuff around and everybody's in a panic. And I thought, well, this is, this is new for me because the cops are actually helping us. They're stopping traffic. And instead of us having to run from the cops, which is usually the scenario when you're in an indie film, you're like, all right, we're going to steal this scenario. We're going to steal this shot. It's 11 o'clock at night. You guys look that way. Make sure there's no cop cars. You guys look that way. Make <laughs> yes. sure there's no cop cars. Yes. So to be in this set where I'm like, oh no, we're legal here. And we have people, we have patrol officers protecting us from, this is, like, this is this, fine. This is cake. This is That's this. funny you say that because I remember I, I directed an episode of Smallville and it was before I directed a movie. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is great. This is easy. But little did I know it's easier because at, there's every department is working with, they know yes. what to do. They know where to be. They know what to do. And it makes your life tremendously easier. Just the fact that there is a department. 
You exactly. Know? And you're not like, wait, who, who do we have food for these people? Oh man, yeah. it was. It was. I remember like day one filming our movie called Back in the Day, and we're uh, the first AD comes up to me and says, "I go, what's the problem?" They go, "Uh, the crew and everybody has been standing in line waiting for lunch to be ready." for like 15 minutes oh, and it's not ready. Oh, that hurts. And I was like, it was like, in the, it's an independent movie and I'm in Indiana. And so we had to talk to them and say, hey, food has to be ready at exactly this time. There's no other, and yeah. we just were behind. And it's just like, but when you're doing TV, the parenthood, you probably were like, no, this is a hell of a oh, lot yeah, easier. We could, yeah, no problem. Yeah, is night it, and day. Was it really difficult? Was it the hardest thing you've ever done directing an independent and being the star in it and all that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, work-wise, other than raising children, that's far and away the hardest. Well, what about working with your wife too? Was that did that put a kind of a? Well, she's a she was a great sport, you know. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was, uh, you know, we were always every day was like a new thing, and uh, I, I, I was uh, no actor should have put up with what i put her through i mean it would be like hey guys we gotta we are shooting this scene in the forest because we had to shift over because it was raining and somewhere else and so i was like hey we got this scene where you're digging through the mud trying to get your purse that you chucked into the woods so we, we i just i'm guessing there's poison ivy here everybody get socks on and uh honey you're socks. just gonna have to just do it we'll try and clear it out don't worry about and, the yeah. lime and she got poison ivy so bad that by the time oh we had driven out to Utah, we couldn't shoot half of her face. <laughs> because, Are you serious? Yeah, because the poison ivy had reached her face. And so we were like, all right, can't shoot Amber's left side. So, uh, <laughs> and the whole time she was just trying to navigate as best. And she was fine. You guys didn't fight. You didn't bicker. No, no. I mean, she, at, at one point she was just like, hey, I just need to, I need to. I just need a little space here just because I'm doing the best I can, but I'm, I'm right. itching and we need to go to urgent care to get shots. For my, you know, good Lord. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but it, on the whole, you know, I had the whole crew was like, Oh, that was far and away the best experience of my life. You know, they look back on it as this incredible trip across country. Our, our sound guy was, uh, this, uh, short, uh spaniard who is that offensive spaniard i don't think okay so. good think that's right uh i don't know what else you would call I, a person from spain okay um I don't, know. don't ask me okay good well we'll stay offensive <laughs> spaniard. Then. stay offensive um <laughs> but he was the only reason he took the job was he had never seen our country and so he had wanted to see uh, the united states and so you know traveling with him he was just everybody was like that was a marvelous experience and i thought wow well i'm glad you guys enjoyed it because i was just <laughs> i hated it i was That's the same thing uh, the crew was like this is the best experience the cast was just the best experience i've ever had uh you know some of the crew got arrested for you know drinking and getting up you know and it was just it was like oh my god the producer is great because they kept me away from all the shit that was going that's, down that's i pivotal. mean it was there was a lot of shit going on <laughs> and i mean people were effing everybody it, you know, uh, yeah people people effing people <laughs> um <laughs> But you direct something like Parenthood. Now you did a. You probably acted like you know. I, I read something like a hundred episodes you acted in, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And when you're directing Craig T. Nelson, right, and these other actors, was it was it a little bit since you're working with them so much that you felt like oh I had to prove myself because I felt like that yeah. I had to show them that I know what I'm doing. You're you're in good hands. Trust me. Did you feel like there was a sort of yeah? I think a little bit. Yeah. No. Um uh you know and also i knew that some of them wanted to direct and we're you know looking down that so i think there was there was a a light competition maybe in, in were the, you the first that got to direct i was the first and then dax no no peter Krause had directed the year before us so and i think you know people are worried once somebody one of the actors directs and all of a sudden all the other actors want to direct and it's yes. not really their passion but they were like well that's an opportunity i should take right and uh I had, you know, I if it weren't for taking me home, I I wouldn't have gotten the job, you know. But I had proven that, hey, this guy can tell a story, and he's passionate about right. it. So, um, but yeah, it was it was interesting, it was challenging, and uh, you know, uh, uh, to add to that, um, on the second day of shooting, um, we were like, hey, uh, somebody said, hey, uh, Ron Howard's showing up today. And Ron Howard had never, he was an exec on the show. It was, you know, yeah. derived from his his movie. And he hadn't been on the on the set yet. 
And uh, everybody was like, oh my gosh, what is it? Ron Howard's coming in Ron, we, you know, like we set up this whole, and we had a big family scene with all the actors in it. And uh, everybody, I remember somebody coming up to me and saying, uh, well, are you, are you nervous? And I said, well, not, I mean, what's he going to do? Ron, like Ron Howard's, we've been making money for him for a couple of years. He's going to show up on set and be like, that's a bad choice. <laughs> no, he's yeah. going to be like, wow, this is great. I'm glad you guys are, I love the show and I'm, I'm glad you guys are carrying on and carry on. So, and that's what he did. Yeah. That's what he did. He was great. He was great. Was he like, oh, so you're the director here. You're in, you're the, act. Yeah, great. yeah. That's great. Uh, what are you doing here? Did he ask you what you were doing and like, how well, gonna- we had, yeah, we had a family scene and it's, you know, it's a big messy family scene. So I think it was fun for him to see. You know, we shot that show so fast. It was three cameras and the, the, everybody yeah. was mic'd and so everybody could overlap. And it has just that that energy, which is is fun to be a part of. Inside of You is sponsored by Better Help. You know, this holiday season, do something for a special person in your life. You. Give yourself a gift to raise your spirits and not just for the day. Look, the holiday can be a really tough time for all of us. Between managing family dynamics, racing from thing to thing, braving the cold and dark weather, it's it's normal to feel down. Having someone to talk about how you're feeling and what you can do about it is truly, truly a gift. I've been doing therapy for years. It's an important part of my life. It has become a part of my life. It's become a part of Ryan's life. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know what I'd do without it. And uh, if you're just getting started, BetterHelp is the perfect platform. That's why they've been a sponsor for a while because they taught, they see how we talk about mental health and mental health affects everybody, including celebrities and directors. And it just, it's, it's universal. It's, it's a human thing. And uh, we need people to talk to someone on the outside that knows how to deal with these things and helps us navigate through life. So I, I strongly recommend BetterHelp. And so many people, so many patrons and listeners have emailed me, messaged me about how much BetterHelp helps them. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash inside. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Inside of You is brought to you by Shopify. I don't know what I would do without Shopify. Shopify is for everyone. If you have a small business, big business, you're growing a business, you want to sell merch, you want to sell anything, Shopify is the place. I uh, I started using Shopify. I told you the story, but I, I had like a t-shirt, that's it to sell. And now I'm selling tons of stuff on both Talkville and uh, Inside of You podcast. And what's great is it's got the analytics. It tells you what's what's selling well, what's not selling well. It's easy to to, to navigate to use i recommend shopify highly shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee start selling with shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide with shopify you'll create an online store in your vibe discover new customers and grow the following that keeps them coming back And thanks to 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify's got you every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you will too. Shopify makes selling simple so you can put yourself and your ideas out there. Whether your thing is making ebooks or earrings, Shopify makes your success possible. Running a successful business means getting the insights you need to grow wherever you are. With Shopify single dashboard, you'll manage orders, shipping, and payments from anywhere. When you're ready to launch your thing into the spotlight, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform backing millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Go on. Try Shopify for free and start selling everywhere. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash inside, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash inside to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash inside. Was anyone difficult? 
Like you don't have to say their name, but was any of them just, it was like, they were, it was a challenge to direct them. They were like, they, yes, they, sure. there was. Sure. But you know, you, it's, it's, it's more difficult because I knew them. So there were certain times there were people would try to, um, get out of work or say, Hey, can I, I don't know why I'm in this scene. Can I just not be in this scene or, you know, and you'd have to work around their personalities that if, if I weren't a cast member, they would just be like, well, okay, I'll just show up and do my work. But right. since they know me, they're like, I don't know if I, I don't really, I don't, really, I don't think I'm really, really needed in need. this scene. I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It and was, you just you had to kind of suck it up when yeah. you wanted to say, "Dude, just fu- I'm, this is just, my first time directing the show. Just fucking do your just job. Just do your job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and also it'd be like, you know, it, you're just I'm gonna have you done by 11 a.m. That's you know. So if you can just give me a morning, you can have coffee, come to set, <laughs> and by the time you're done with your coffee, you get to go home. So just give me that. Was it? A, I'm guessing it was a male character. It was not. It wasn't. No, God, it was so not. wrong. No, no. All right, well, I won't say anything else. No, no I won't. I won't not. put you on the spot here. But look, you've like I, I'm already from just talking to you. I could see what like a, a nice guy. You have this easygoing disposition. You're you're chill. I could see why people want to work with you. I would see why you're still married after all these years. <laughs> you're just a calm sort of. You can listen. And when you walked in here before we started rolling, you said I. You know, I, I have ADD. I have attention deficit disorder. Yeah. And I was like, well, I have attention deficit disorder. There's no way you have attention deficit disorder. We but, can't but all have it. How is this possible? <laughs> what What do you think of when you think, like, you know, when they say you have ADD? Right. Okay, Sam, you have ADD. What makes that a reality to you? What is it that makes you have ADD? Uh, well, it's you know, it's funny. I, I'm, I have a son who was diagnosed with it. And to look back on how I kind of skated through kind of accidentally or haphazardly through high school and stuff with what would have been a very tough time you know it was still hard to focus in school but i i, I was in cross country because my brother ran cross country and i think that you know running stabilizes your brain in a way and i also you know when i was 12 years old i went and saw dead poet society and i came out of that movie and i said to my best friend i was like yeah that's what i want to do I want to do that. I want to act. And I've just pursued that ever since, right. you know, for better or worse. And uh, and so that was very clear, you know. If, if you know what you want, it's much easier to deal with something like, you know, uh, distractions. And, and but, uh, but on, like I was explaining to my wife this summer, you know, we, we um, remodeled our house recently and we have... Uh, a bunch of projects that I was like, okay, I'll, I'll build the shelves here. Don't worry about that. And I'll build this. And so, but I'll be building a desk or something. And, and I will literally have to tell myself as I'm cutting with the jigsaw, Sam, you're cutting with a jigsaw. You are still cutting with the jigsaw. Look at your hand. Look at your other hand. Don't cut that hand. Continue <laughs> to cut. And now you're done. Otherwise, I'm just going to be halfway through cutting a board and be like, oh, well, there they go. There go my, there's my ring finger. Come it's on, gone. is it that bad? It, it can be, yeah. Where, really? I, I mean, for example, this morning, <laughs> I was thinking, uh, my wife, I turned, uh, I, I wanted to make a little more coffee because uh, as you can tell, uh, you know, um, you haven't even touched your coffee. I know, but I'm going to start coffee. drinking. You made it for me, and I thank There's you. There's a sip thing this where is, you don't even have to take that off. But I'm worried that it's too hot. because right, well, go ahead. I don't want to burn. Take it off. Okay, well, thank you. Do whatever you want. It's I'm your just, coffee. No, I'll find it. I'll drink it like this. But to, <laughs> to, to, to this is a point, being distracted. This morning, I put the pot of, uh, uh, under the water filters in our kitchen. I turned it on and was talking to my wife. And halfway through it filling up because I was making a pot of coffee, she turned it off. And I, it, and it was just like, a, I don't know if you want to call a microaggression or whatever, but I was like, what the, why the hell did she turn my water off? And then I flashed to all the times that I had turned the water on and left the room. And then come back to a flooded countertop, you know, like the, the water fills up on the cup and then it fills, spills out under, you know, like probably f- we've only been in our home uh not even a year and i've probably flooded the counter about five or six times with really just turning the water on and being like oh i know what i gotta do i gotta go write that email and you know that's uh do you yeah. ever walk into a room and go i forgot why i'm here every room 
every room every room <laughs> do. yeah and yeah. I, and every room i can't leave because i find myself saying oh well i'm just going to do this now that i'm here all right yeah are there other things have you ever dealt with uh depression or anxiety or just ADD? oh sure yeah that's you my, have that's my bread and butter really oh yeah well, good. well welcome to the club yeah ryan's here too <laughs> oh man let's do it guys no but this is like, the place uh, you know because were you were you popular growing up uh, yeah i think so i mean i was i was uh but i was uh, a popular and an outsider i think always because i didn't feel um I didn't, you know, I loved growing up in Perrysburg, Ohio, and I had, I grew up across the street from a baseball diamond, and I had a, a plenty of friends, but I just, um, man, I, I think seventh grade, eighth grade, where my son is now at his age, I'm just, that did me in, you know, just feeling like I needed to belong somewhere, and I don't know where I belong. Uh, theater, you felt like that in seventh yeah. and eighth grade. You oh, felt yeah. like you just didn't have a. Did yeah. you feel like you didn't have a purpose, sort of, or yeah, I was just kind of aimless and 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 I think I just got lonelier and lonelier because I didn't like the way trying to be popular made me feel. So I didn't want to go down that road. And I I I found theater in high school because I was it was one of those things I was good at, and girls recognized me for doing uh adequately enough. And um, and I could just, I could commit to that. I could go after school and build sets. And that, that was a tangible thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it was a safe place, but I, I mean, I felt, I felt ugly. I, I had terrible acne and really, yeah, that's yeah. so difficult. Oh, it was, that's yeah, it was really horrible. difficult. You had bad, bad acne. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. And, you know, I think I spent a couple of years feeling, you know, un, unlovable and, uh, you know, that's that. I I think that I'm grateful for it in many ways. But it's funny. My wife is always like, my with our our middle son particularly. She's he's he's like a cherub. He's like a living cherub, like with the the bow and arrow and everything. And um, and my wife will turn to me sometimes and be like, I swear to God, the woman that breaks his heart, the first girl that breaks his heart in high school, I, Amber. I mean, that's like. That's ten years down the road. You're already you're already spiting this poor girl. Like, I want my kids to have heartbreak because I think that molds us in a way, and it makes me. It certainly made me appreciative of, of of where I am in life at all at any given moment. You know, yeah, it could always be way worse because I remember when it was. You know, and uh, and I think that's. But I think I think depression is something that you you deal with. Um, you know, it's it's throughout life. Throughout I mean, it's life. something that you just kind of ebbs and flows. It just yeah. sort of all of a sudden you feel like God. I feel really sad. I, yeah. I've done that where you know I remember like it was like probably a year and a half ago or something. I my assistant Jessica at the time she was downstairs and I walked in. I go, "Good morning. How are you?" She goes, "Good." And I go, "I think I'm depressed." Mm. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me. She goes, "Uh, okay." um <laughs> should i call dr krausman <laughs> i'm like wow. yeah yeah i think i should talk to someone i just yeah. there's just all of a sudden you just feel this and you're like what's why do i feel like this there's yeah. no reason i just thought i had a good time the other night and i thought i totally. and then all of a sudden nothing seems kind of fun and you get in a hole and, and you, it's amazing how quickly it happens two days ago you're i, I was euphoric and then yesterday i was like oh lord what what is happening here for for me i don't know if did you grow up uh in the in the church at all or no you know? so i grew up going to church every day i sang in the church choir from like sixth grade till christ the lord has risen today That's every one of them i knew them all <laughs> and i i could probably sing them all verbatim <laughs> But and and even the the lesser like even like growing up in the church you listen to like Amy Grant and Michael W Smith like that's the bread and butter oh, and yeah. and so a lot of lot of really painful soft pop music <laughs> is still that's just, what I like that's what know. I like so I mean and maybe that's part of the depression I don't know maybe that's knowing that I've got several Michael W Smith songs in the back of my mind just loop what was loop. his big hit. And a friend's a friend forever because the Lord's a Lord of them. That was my oh. my my oh. oldest sister had that on a cassette tape, a, a loop, and it would flip over and it would play that song 
for 60 minutes oh my just gosh. nonstop. Oh so my gosh. yeah but that might not even have been his hit but it was that was what is stuck in my brain i tend to play sad songs all the time and yeah. i'll you know and i told my therapist this and they go okay and i go you know that song um are you gonna stay with the one who loves you oh yeah or are you going back <laughs> to the one you love and i just it's like glenn fry old 80s glenn fry uh -huh. and i go i just i feel like i play these songs all the time they're like she goes well i don't i don't want you playing these songs all the time i don't want you to play them on repeat it's okay if you want to listen to the song yeah. but if you're playing the song over and over you're like living in this looped sad yes. world that you want to live in you're creating this world for yourself you've got to get out of that yeah you've got to stop yourself put on some happy music or something a little bit different yeah go outside to, you, it's almost like sometime when we're feeling depressed we just like embellish it or whatever sure. i don't know what the word is but we kind of live in it like going yeah. look at me i feel sad for myself right and that loop is so dangerous because one thing that a diagnosis does is it feels like a life sentence, right? Like you said, we'll we'll have it forever. But it doesn't mean we'll have it every moment forever. And it also doesn't mean we, you know, there's a possibility, you know, I there are moments in my life where I'm much more, where depression is, clings to me and follows me. And then there are moments where I, I think, is it that I... I was di you know, diagnosed with it and that just lingers. And so every default sad thought I have, it goes back to, well, that's because you're, you're you, you you're, have depression. You, you have depression. You're depressed. So you're yeah. allowed to feel this. So this is how you should feel. Yeah, this feel. is how you should feel. Well, like, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I and I i I struggle with that quite a bit. You know, what is what is depression? What is just a label I had attached to any sad feeling I have? Right. But for me, the 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 real depression going back to the church, I think derived from this feeling of of there being a, an afterlife and the comfort that that gave as a kid. And now that I don't believe that there's necessarily a heaven, um, that it it makes everything you know. There's that uh, that underlies everything for me, and that's that's been a hard pill to swallow it's been that's that's my life's pursuit is to try and i do everything i can to try and get to the other side of that and make peace with there being a god or not being a god and that's a you know that's a daily struggle that's just kind of convoluted isn't it it it's is like you want to believe we yeah. want to believe that there's there's something else that sure. there's a peace that there's i mean we all want that and then a lot of people are just like i i don't really believe the atheists I mean, I have a lot of friends right. who call themselves atheists. Like, You're not an atheist. You believe in nothing. You have no faith in anything. And What's the just, point? I, I, I mean, it's just like have faith in something. Yeah. And then there are those people who just have faith because I, I must have faith because otherwise I'll go to hell. Right. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's not real faith. Yeah. If you're just pretending to have faith. Yeah. So I try to really think that, hey, there is something more. This is just one step along the way. Right. Whatever that is, whatever you think, whatever you think, there's a heaven, or you think there's this other universe that you kind of transcend into yeah. uh, spiritually. I think that, you know, for me anyway, I mean, I speak for myself, but I, I think that there, there, I have these thoughts that there is something else. Yeah. That, hey, let's, while we're here, you try to have memories. Memories are all we have, and you try to be a good person. You give to other people. Yeah, that's that. You try to do the right thing. Yeah, and we don't always do the right thing. So don't be so hard on yourself. Right, and that's I beat myself up constantly, mm. and that's that's tough. Do you do you ever like have, have you with all the work? Because we'll get into that. I mean, you've done so much work and so much good work. I mean, normally, when people say, "What have you done?" I name a couple of things. <laughs> But then, <laughs> but you, Parenthood, Handmaid's Tale, Why Women Kill, Traffic Behind Enemy Lines, Hearts War, Devil in Ohio. It's just like it goes on. I'm like looking looking at the list. But had there has there ever been a moment during all this where anxiety sort of takes over or you kind of feel like uh, I don't have control of it, I'm too nervous, I'm too – or can you is, – is acting something that calms you? Is it something that you, it's, you, you get away from that? It's sort of calm. Yeah. The acting work is comforting, but you know, <laughs> you know as well as I do that that is the reward you get for just years of rejection. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I I have my son, my oldest son loves Legos, and he, he, I was like, hey, there's this Lego competition. You know, he's like, Dad, um, Lego has this 
set building competition. If we build a new set, we can win these bigger Lego sets. I was like, wow, that sounds pretty cool. You got a few days into it. I said, well, I'd be into, he wanted to do it with me. And I said, well, yeah, let's build something cool. And we got a couple of days in and he got really down on it. And he's, cause he had seen what other people had built. And he's like, I said, what, something's rubbing against you. What's going on here? Something's troubling you. He's like, well, I just don't know why we should start. Cause we're just going to lose. And I said, mm. I said, buddy, um, that's my job. My job is loss. All I do is lose. That's my career. It's hundreds of jobs that I imagine getting, I prepare to get, and I don't get. And then the reward I get for accepting loss over and over again is eventually I get to do, you know, I get to act. And and then when that's done, then I go back to feeling like, you know, to like you loser. said, <laughs> like I go back to being a loser. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't say yeah. I, well, and you know that it, you talk about anxiety. I mean, two days ago, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta find, I gotta carve out more time in the week to, to write and work because I always feel like the last, the, the last job I have was the last job, you know, that's, it's, it's tough too. And especially when you have a family to take care of yeah and you're like i have to now i'm now i'm giving you all the anxiety now you're like oh shit oh yeah, i have a family you're oh not so, yeah you're preaching to the choir i mean are you someone do, are you pretty specific in what you want to do are you open to anything i mean i i so last night i'm watching tv okay i'm watching football sunday it's football mm -hmm. well it's tuesday now so two days ago i was watching football because this airs on right, Tuesday, right. right you know what i mean yeah uh and I'm watching it and I say, oh, an all new this show coming up, followed by this show, followed by this show and this show, an all new number one show of NBC. And I looked at my friend next to me and I go, I never want to do any of those shows ever, no. ever, no, ever, no. And, you know, but if you would have rewound years before and I wasn't working and I, I, I had a family or whatever. I'd be like, I, I'd love to be on any of those shows. Yeah. But it, thankfully you get, you know, there's a time when you can, you can choose. Right. But do you feel like you can choose a lot more lately? I mean, cause doing parenthood for years, yeah. that probably helped you a lot. You had a little nest egg yes. and this and that, and some things that give you a little bit of a nest egg. Then you do passion projects like handmaid's tale which you're probably not getting paid a ton because it's hbo and you're just lucky to be on that show <laughs> you know they make you feel like that like oh this is hbo we're not gonna pay you yeah you just you're lucky you're on this show hulu. yeah it's well, hulu huh hulu oh it's hulu yeah handmaid's tale is hulu yeah yeah sorry it's one of those but you know what i mean yeah but um i don't know where i was going with this but sort of like do you get to do you are you choosy are your agents like what about this what about that and you're like why are you sending me this this is not what i want to do are you able to do that i can do that a little more uh, but you know now the parameters are you know i'm i was on the way out i was all it takes is standing in customs for a couple hours to <laughs> for me to have a life crisis and you know i emailed my team i was like hey guys i can't work in i can't work in canada again uh, not this year, just because <laughs> I've been away from my family for yeah. most of COVID. My wife is tackling, taking on three maniacs at home. And and uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I want to be, uh, so if we can find a job that works in town, great. Even in the States, great, you know. And, uh, you know, that said, there's very few jobs like that. And and not for nothing, but, you know, I'm at a point where I, I I'm never going to, I thought I was going to stop competing, but it, there's there's always other actors you know even in our our age it's, it never ends it never ends and now it's because television is where it's at i i compete against bigger name film stars so you know there's a there's a a, a a a kind of a sweet spot where i reside where people are like well we can't get this guy but we can get this guy i've always been that guy <laughs> they can't get this guy so let's give it to that guy or this guy we're firing so yeah. let's hire this guy totally which is, you know, which is fine. It's a great project, you know. Sometimes yeah. you luck out. You're like, oh, yeah. man, I'm glad I did that. Totally. It's funny. I was talking with uh, Lizzie, uh, Elizabeth Moss on uh, Handmaid's Tale. And I said, you know, what's funny is uh, I uh, I don't know if you've had this experience, but I, I, there have been moments where I've been, only a few times have I been offered a role, but it was after they had offered to someone else. And I, I lucked into being, you know, I, I was nosy and I was like, hey, who, who was the, who was the first guy offered and and um 
one instance it was Owen Wilson, oh, and the other instance, great. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the other instance it was um, Ewan McGregor. I thought, well, geez, if I'm getting there sloppy seconds, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, and and Lizzie goes, oh yeah, once um, uh, there was a job that uh, uh, Kate Winslet couldn't do, and I, they offered me, and I was like, sure. I was like, wow, yeah, okay, I guess I'm not to that level, but that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So there's all these tiers of you know, yeah, you know, where you know, it's tough though because you're right, they don't, but. There's not a lot of, I mean, most things shoot somewhere else because the tax benefits, right? right? So they shoot now, shoot in Nashville, North Carolina, and right. Louisiana, and all these places that, you know, it's just easier. So, but you're still away from your family. Yeah. And it's tough. It's yeah. definitely tough. Um, I mean, that's got to be a big thing. I think that's why a lot of people probably get divorced in this mm. industry. Oh, yeah. Just because they're away. And then they kind of or start, things aren't going well, and they start talking to some other guy on set. Right. Or the DP, or the... Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And things happen. So, uh, did that worry you at all when you, you know, you, I mean, you met your wife pretty young, yeah. right? How oh, old yeah. were you? Hi, uh, college. We were college. You've known each other since college. We were best friends when we graduated college and, and joked about how easy and convenient it would be for us to fall in love. And then about a year later, we fell in love. It was pretty wild. And then it's just, it was a nightmare for a couple of years trying to figure out what that meant. And, uh, and then we just, you know, we got married. We had all we had gotten all of our best fights out of the way, and uh, <laughs> you know, now there's just now now we just they're expedited. Now it's just like, wait, what the hell's your problem? Okay, this is my problem. Okay, I need five minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, who's gonna take the no kids yelling? Going? Yeah. Well, oh no, well, there's, there's, there's yelling. yelling. There's sure. yelling. Sure. Who's the yeller? It's you or her? It's her. She's the yeller. She's the. Yeller. You're kind of calm. Uh, yeah. And she hates that. She hates it. Yeah. Well, and also. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and also, like I had learned from my parents that you know I had learned my dad kind of viewed the world through rose-colored glasses, and my mom had a coping skill, which was like, "That's it. I, I don't want to talk about it." So when my wife, you know, get, wants to deal with an issue, she wants to deal with it at that second. And a lot of times, especially in my twenties, when we were in our having our best fights, it was like uh, I, I would finally yell, "Like I don't know how I feel." I have no idea how I feel. So I just need a minute, you know, because I had never been bombarded with trying to figure out how I felt. I would just feel something and, you know, smash it down in the back of my brain and never have to deal with it. So finally, you know, I think one of the reasons we we work so well together is we have these different, you know, if we were both raging, I would be pretty bad. And yeah. so a lot of times- Somebody's got to be the calm one. Someone's got to be the calm one. Yeah. And sometimes it's her, you know. Because I've had to, I've had to up my fight game. You know, I've had to be like, okay, well, just to get my point across, I have to raise my voice. So. My friend just, he just got married. I'm not going to mention any names okay. because you know, there's a. Hey. Anywho, um, he said to me, "I go, how's it going?" And he looked at me, and goes, "I gotta tell you, she's really taught me how to fight. Ah. How to really fight." And I go, "Oh." <laughs> Is that, that the, good? Is that the? Is I don't that know the, if that's a good thing? Is that the best thing you can say? That's when <laughs> that's you're in what trouble. He said. That's he goes, when you're in trouble. She's teaching me how to stand up for myself. Well, I'm that's like, good. What? That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess think. so. But you also want to have that moment where you know, there, to her credit, there were you know big fights where I'd be like, I don't know how I feel. I just need a few minutes, and my wife would go, Fine, and she would walk off, and then she would come to her senses, and I'd come to my senses. It's, you know. There's there's damage that can be done, but there's also a lot of repair, and you have to you have to focus on how how to repair after an argument, and and we do that really well. Having so. a fight, probably, you know, if they're sort of intermittent, if they're sort of they don't happen very often, right? It could be good for a relationship. Sure. You kind of get it out. You're like, all right, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, oh, no, hey, this is great. <laughs> yeah. If it's all the time, it's just I've had, you know, I, mostly I've had good relationships for the most part where it's not re screaming at each other or, yeah. you know, I've had a relationship where someone's just like, um, I'm going to leave. I don't want I don't want to talk about this. Oh, yeah. That's and it's rough. just like, oh, man. Okay, yeah. so you're, now you're like, all right, so you're you're immature. You don't want to have a conversation about this. And That's rough. I don't like your tone right now. I'm going to leave. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, oh, I, this is my tone. <laughs> That's yeah. how I talk. 
Yeah. You know? The, the thing I love about having a, a partner that's like, wait, you're dealing, I, I can see that expression, what's that about? Is there's no, there's no passive aggressivity. We don't have room for it. It's literally like she will pick up on every expression even before I know how I feel. She'll be like, what, that's not okay? Something, something. And I'll be like, oh, Jesus Christ. I thought oh, I was gonna just get in the car. Okay, here's... <laughs> here's the here's the problem this is you know this is what, how i feel and then and then we deal with it but yeah but there there are moments where you're you know yeah you don't want to be in a situation where you're just like she really taught me how to fight yeah you know, oh, no because you, yeah yeah I don't. Did, have you ever uh, have you ever said oh fuck you oh sure yeah. you have yeah. fuck yeah. off are you kidding <laughs> yes you, <laughs> That's so healthy too. Because, it is. Yeah, but you don't call each other names. No, you don't say no. you bitch. No, no. Yeah, you know, it's more like fuck off. This is ridiculous. What the fuck are we talking about? That kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. I get you. Exactly. I get you. Do you like playing bad guys? I'm just gonna go right into Let's it. Let's do it. Uh, I do. I do. I, because you're really uh, good. Because it's not you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like not. I, I look at you, and when you play a bad guy, it's like you can really turn it on. Well, like thanks. What, why women kill? Yeah. Those are easy because I feel like I, I saw a show recently where the the guy was playing bad, and it and it comes across as a person playing bad, right? And so it's still the same work, you know. You still have to find what makes this person tick. Um, it's just what makes them tick is usually narcissism, you know, like yes. a, a or a, a, a self preservation, and that's at the heart of the the worst the worst people on earth. You yeah, know, the the the, the the people we consider bad are usually just extremely self-involved. Yes, and, uh, that is true. Yeah. And so I think it's fun to kind of explore explore that um, rather than jump into a, um, you know, kind of a judgment, you know. I, again, one of the things that my wife does so beautifully is she doesn't judge people the way I I did growing up. Well, that person's this way or that person's this way. And, right. And so it's allowed me to think more like my wife, which is like, okay, what makes this person tick? So you don't, you're not judgy. I am. You I are. Am. I am. But my wife is, is not. She's far more forgiving, you know. Because when to I the meet point, someone. To the point where we'll be driving, you know, and, and, you know, somebody will cut me off. She'd be like, well, you, you know, she, at least for years, she'd say, well, you know, you never know where they're going. They could be going to the hospital. I'm like, no, Amber, all these people on the freeway cannot all be going to the hospital. Nobody, they're, they're, there's not 10,000 baby deliveries happening right now. I could be pissed about this one. This guy's driving, uh, you know, a 2005 souped up Civic. I'm guessing he's not driving his pregnant wife to the hospital. He's just cutting me off. You know, I have a friend, Tom Lally. He's my best friend of all time. I've known him since I'm 12. We grew up together in Indiana. <laughs> He's like that. It drives me up a fucking wall. You know, same thing. He'll be like, uh, I'll be driving. That guy just fucking cut me off. And he'll say something like, well, maybe he's not having a great day. Yeah. And I go, oh, shut up. Shut the hell shut up. Shut up. I'm, now I get to judge you for not judging yeah. him. Yeah. You were, and I, I remember I've gotten in some fights with him. I'm like, why are you going with him? Why are you always in the middle? When obviously, <laughs> clearly, I'm right. Why are you on my side? You're never on my side. Bro. He's like, man, 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 man. Fuck off. That's what, yeah, that's, uh, well, I will say that, I mean, I guess I have that trait where I, I find, you know, I try to understand all standpoints but my gut re my knee-jerk reaction is usually like what an asshole or, oh yeah you know, or yeah. i don't like this person i'm a good judge of character I oh, think. oh when i meet someone i'm like i don't ever want to hang out with them ah that's interesting i don't i know within minutes where i'm yeah. like i know who this person is even uh, though it's judging yeah i just in my heart like the way i feel yeah they're making me feel maybe inadvertently i'm sure it is but i just i, I know like that's, I could tolerate this person, but I don't want. I don't want to have in my here. life. Yeah, really quickly. That's interesting. Yeah, I have. I have terrible f f uh, instincts on first meetings. Really, horrifically bad. My f my one of my closest friends. I met, granted, at four forty five in the morning, handing out keys at the Reebok Sports Club New York, and oh, and boy. he was, you know, and we shook hands, and I was like, well, this guy's a, you know, I I walked in. Of course, the first day of work to be like, "Hey, how are you?" He was like, "Hey," and he, we didn't talk for five minutes. By the uh, 
at the end of those five minutes, I was like, well, I don't want to work with this loser ever again. Hopefully I don't get another <laughs> shift with him. <laughs> He's you know? obviously tired. It's four forty five. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. I'm like over eager because I'm like, hey, how's it going? It's, yeah. I know it's four forty five. I'm I guess I'm ready to make you know, I'm a great guy right yeah. now. Oh, let's talk. Yeah. No, I don't want no, to. You no. have to understand that people don't always they don't they're not on your level. All the That's time. right. No, you're right. That's true. Uh what would you say is the fa your favorite role that you've played? And of mm. all these things I've talked about, what is the one that you just think, I got to say this one? This is the. Oh, man. Because uh, there's different questions. I mean, I want to know what's the most challenging role you've played. Yeah. But what's the uh, the role that you really look at and you're like, I just love playing this guy. I uh, want to. I wanted to continue playing this guy. Oh, uh, there's a, man. There's a lot. You know, it's uh, I loved being on Parenthood. I loved I, who that character was. He's very close to who I am. So so. You know, I I also I like what I learn on certain shows. I guess I don't. I, I guess I don't. It's not necessarily the character that I, I I'm like. Oh man, I'm gonna miss that character, um, because I there was still I st I feel like there's still part of who I am. And but um, but I I miss experiences. You know, I miss and and um, Handmaids is a great example of like. I I have this very particular role. He's kind of stoic and keeps to himself and holds all his cards. And uh, there's a lesson there, you know, for me, which is, you know, watching Lizzie Moss do her work. Mm. There's a stillness and a specificity she has that, uh, and still a tenacity, you know, she's present, but she's always, she's always aware of what the camera is doing and how, and her effect on it. And I think I can learn from that. So I just try to, I just keep trying to learn, you know. Really, so you mean? learn from everything. Yeah, or else, you know, what's the point? You know, I've seen, I remember seeing the actors I loved from the 70s do projects that I was like, I don't know what, I mean, this is a paycheck. And uh, that has to be done, like you said, you got family to care for and stuff. But I, th I, I, I just wanna, I wanna keep learning and kind of tricking myself or proving myself in a way that surprises myself and others you know because yeah. i because the second you're like well i can i can do this you know that's pretty boring work you know i almost didn't do this uh show devil in ohio that uh came out on netflix last month because it was a contractor and a family man and i and they were like hey they really want you to audition for this and i said well, if they need to see what I'm like in that, there's 103 episodes <laughs> of a show called Parenthood, <laughs> and they can look at that. Uh, I've done that before. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, come on, this is easy for yeah, me to do. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, again- Did people, they do that? No. They were like, well, they, they, they just like to see you. Uh, Sometimes it's more about- Let's see if we like this guy. Right. If we want to work with him. Right. Let's see what he gives us. Let's see his interaction yeah. with us. Is he going to be easy? Is he going to be one of those pains in the asses that's always calling us? A, a change in the lines with. and late to work. Yeah. Oh, he's friendly. Which I, I get. I like Sam. So that this, is it Jaeger or Jaeger? It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. So this is funny. I I actually had this this conversation with my team. I read this book um, uh, called Predictably Irrational, and it was all about uh, how the myriad of ways we make decisions and how um we think that they're sound you know paths but they're really arbitrary and silly means by which we we make our decisions and i said so guys these these people want me to audition for a show i don't know these people from adam but i read this book and one of the things that they said is a good predictor of whether you can you know whether people feel invested in you is whether they feel like a connection i have no connection with these people so what i yes. need to do is if we can get the creator on the phone i can talk to her for 10 minutes and then we have a relationship and that's what we did i met daria and we talked on the phone and after 10 minutes we hit it off she had just had a, a baby boy i had three boys we could talk about that and uh, I grew up in Ohio, so I could talk ad nauseum about growing up in Ohio and how specific it is. And um, and so when I auditioned, I, I said, okay, now I'm comfortable to put myself on tape for this and work. And so when we did the, the audition, it was just a work session because wow. she was already invested. And so at any given moment, I'm always like, okay, can we get the creator on the phone? Because that's gonna go get me so much further than whatever 
audition we send out into the ether because I know there's they're seeing 400 tape on this and we're all pretty much the same right and yeah. I also think that I've said this before but there's something about when you get an offer for something you're like okay they want me I wonder what kind part of me they want what is what is it they want yeah uh, and then you're just unsure but if you audition and they like it and they cast you, you're like, I, I know what they want. Exactly. I gave them what they wanted. Yeah. There's some comfort actually in a weird way about auditioning that I, I don't like auditioning. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I just have to put a lot of time into it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Like I have to put, to be my best, I need a week. Yeah. I can't audition. I've never, even when I wasn't known at all when i wasn't on the spectrum i i would <laughs> my well that sounds so, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, we, we could feed into that one <laughs> but my agents would say you know the, i go listen i'm not I, I i can't do more than one audition in a week maybe yeah. two if it's a monday and a friday right but i just can't i can't i can't multitask i can't i have to stay in this character read for it and then move on yeah that's just something i just if i'm going to be at my best absolutely do you feel like that totally yeah and there are things I put on tape, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good enough, but I don't, mm -hmm. you know. Have you ever gotten a role when you were kind of good enough? No, I don't think you so. You have to be great. Yeah. You have to do your best. Yeah. You have to walk away saying, I fucking killed it. That's yeah. when you know you have a chance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there are, you know, people are like, what's the best acting you've ever done? Not the best role. And I said, well, the best acting I ever did was I put myself... I wasn't at, it wasn't called for, but I put myself on tape for uh, the Coen's Macbeth. And I was, and that to me is the best I've ever done. Really? And nobody will ever see it, you know, but I, I remember. You crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. And I had put in, a, like you said, a solid week of just. And those lines aren't easy. No, no. But, you know, that's. It reminds me of the Wilco song, the uh, late great Johnny Ace. No, is that is that the name of it? But it's about uh, you know, like the best life never leaves your lungs, and it's all about these bands that you know that never made it. Yeah, you can't hear it on the radio, right? And I think there's a there's there's a bittersweet quality to that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You're uh, so you're like you're 45, right? Mm -hmm. Have you had any major loss in your life that's really affected you? Have you dealt with that? Because for me. I've had two real major losses. Mm. Um, my grandmother and my dog. Mm. And those affected me like I never thought they would affect me. I, yeah. I, I, I was just crippled by it. Yeah. I've never cried that hard. I've never felt so much, mm. so much emotion. Have you, have you ever had that? Well, I've lost grandparents. I, I don't have, uh, I don't have any grandparents left and they all died at, at, pivotal ages when i was 10 my my uh, my great or my grandmother uh on my mom's side died uh i guess seven or eight years ago and uh and she was beloved um but i feel like you know i feel like i've i real tragedy you know real um has has evaded me you know the, the you expect your your grand yeah not going to everything um you know and i I, I know it's coming. That's what's yeah. That's and you the, just can't dwell on it, but you sometimes you get caught up in thinking about things that haven't happened yet. Oh you know, yeah. And you're like, and you can't. You right. can't be thinking about something that hasn't happened. That's right. anxiety. Right. And we we do. We're humans. We're like, what am I going to do when my mother gets to be there? Oh, who's going to take care of it? What am I? When my dad dies. How, how do I take care of it? I don't like all these things could just make you go crazy. Yeah. And you just can't do that. Yeah. So do you just not think of those things? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm able to. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, I I have a I I battle with a sense of hopelessness. That I think due to you know growing up in church and, uh, and but I but anxiety about other people's deaths. I, I I think I worry more about death as a whole for all of us than I do about specific loss. I know that my parents will die and. And man, I I am so grateful to have had them in my life, even up to this day, that uh, it will always be hard, the idea of losing them. But they, uh, but I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky to have yeah. been born into the family I was born into. Um, 
losing my children would be unbearable. Unbearable. And so, um, but what can I do? I mean, I, I can't spend spend my days thinking about panicking about that or else i'll just keep them all inside the house no guys you guys are standing with <laughs> no the, one's leaving you guys are standing with the cats here's here's uh you know here's the uh kitty litter you guys can use use that keep them all trapped yeah, inside keep them all trapped my brother um my my brother's um adopted a my my niece has uh autism and and she will have it for her entire life and she's um you know she's she can't speak or she communicates through an ipad and um my brother is you know told me once uh you know we, we talked to a counselor about this and got, getting ahead of ourselves does us no good what are we going to do when when we're 80 how are we going to take care of her and who's going to take care of her? And where does this responsibility lie? And and yeah. uh, doesn't do us any good. No good. It'll just destroy us. So all we can do is re react to the day, and uh, and try to live this day out as fully as we can. I have this thing where I do now because I'm just learning from, in therapy where it's like a uh, what is it called? It's called pattern interrupt. Mm. Pattern interruption. Mm -hmm. So when I start thinking about like, oh my god, you know. My dog is four. She could, whatever. And she's 12. I only have it for stop. Yeah. Stop. And then you breathe and you do this thing that I do. Anyway, it's just like it just stop to stop. Stop yeah. that thought. Stop because you'll just spiral. You'll oh, continue yeah. to go down these, you know, and I just, and my mind does go to dark places. Sure. Maybe it's because I just watched Dahmer, the series Dahmer. <laughs> I don't know what I it hear is. That's a, it's very that's a rib dark. tickler. I, oh, yeah. my God. It's tough. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you guys <laughs> exactly what it yeah. is um what, what's next for you i mean handmaid's tale still going yeah right so that season three is coming up season season five is, is no, it se season five is on right now season five i know there's yeah. five and you've been on since season three i've been on since that's season, what i meant season two season two <laughs> I, I don't know what I meant. It doesn't matter what I meant. The doesn't fact matter. is the that fact you're on season I'm five. working. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're, Handmaids is still uh, still plugging away. It's crazy. It's a show that, you know, does better year, a, year a after year, um, which is rare. You know, usually being on the, you know, network shows, you're like, wow, we were a big hit in those first three episodes. And then yeah. we skated for five years and nobody ever mentioned us. And the fact that Handmaids is still, you know, trying to, you know, provoke and you know yeah and uh people love that show man. they do they do do they come up to you you get recognized for that i do yeah you do, do you, yeah. what do you get recognized for you get handmaids you get recognized for parenthood obviously yeah people come up to you what else uh devil in ohio now yeah which, which was, and where's uh, that airing that's on netflix that's it on just netflix. came out last month and was the biggest show on netflix and good in the god world how are you for, on all these hits after I just, a hit i mean you're the guy to go to we gotta you know we'll hire someone we'll fire them we'll then bring sam on and the show will become a hit <laughs> take that owen wilson yeah owen you know? wilson <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic oh, so handmaid's you. tale season five yeah and devil in ohio just aired yeah on netflix you got it you could see this guy anywhere. You could also watch Parenthood. Where does that air? On Hulu now? Or? I think that's on Peacock. Peacock? Which, that's, you know. That's another thing I would say about shows nowadays. You'd think that there's so many shows there's, that they need us. That they need me. Because right. before, there's just like three networks. Yeah. And, you, you know, you're fighting against every actor to get a role. Totally. But now, there's... 50 networks and there's millions of shows that no one will ever hear oh, have you seen uh chipmunk yeah what chipmunk yeah, yeah it's on uh she shell yeah she shell <laughs> yeah it's this new uh, it's a, platform it's new pla totally it's next to tubi We're, i was on uh i did two shows for cbs all access which now is part of paramount plus right. which is a better name on the whole because yes. you know uh for a myriad of reasons but i it's so funny because now people are starting to watch those shows but when it was on cbs all access it was like i felt like it was acting into a vacuum it was like it's on cbs all access what's that all CBS access. All, yeah what do you mean all yeah. access yeah, yeah. it's all context too i mean it, like you mentioned handmaid's tale i i it's a you know it's a as as established a hit as it as it is um 
I was talking to my neighbor Armando, and uh, he goes, "So, so what, what, what were you, what were you doing up in Canada?" I goes, "Oh, it's, I'm, uh, it's uh, the Hamas tale, Hamas." I go, "What?" He goes, "Ham, the Hamas? Uh, no, the Handmaid's Tale." <laughs> Handmaid's goes, Tale, Hamas. He goes, oh, "I haven't heard of it. What is it?" I go, "Well." It's one of the biggest uh, shows ever. <laughs> it's uh, it's based on a book. <laughs> I mean, there was a long, you know, but you know, I think that's always healthy to be like, oh right, yeah. Not well, everybody these knows things, these things. We think are so important are just a a flick, uh, just a flicker. Of, yeah, you know, it's and true. They're, they're and gone. So yeah. You when just, one person's like, oh my God, that's my favorite show ever. I love it. Blah, blah. The next person can be like, I have no clue who you are. <laughs> totally, I don't care. Totally. Yeah. I just, I'm watching Brady Bunch repeats right yeah. now. I don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, quickly, have you ever been starstruck and by who? who? Oh, yeah. One of the first jobs I did back in the day, I was uh, behind enemy lines, which was Owen Wilson. Um, but my scenes were all with Gene Hackman. And you had all your scenes with Gene Hackman? Yeah. I mean, Dude. I'm just, he's just barking orders to us, but it's Gene Hackman. And, you know, every day I was just like, oh my gosh. I Did just, you talk to him? Yeah. Was he cool? Oh, he was so cool. So cool. He, he also, and I had heard rumors that he was gruff and cold and stuff, but he had warmed up to us. We were a, you know, group of, you know, young 20 something soldiers or whatever. And he was, you know, kind of, he, we were in this. We spent a couple of days in green rooms, you know, just sitting with him. And one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my, two, I got two great Gene Hackman stories. Do you want to hear both sure, of them? Sure, go ahead. Okay, you can edit out whichever. Um, the The first one was, I I met him, you know, we were sitting in the room and kind of, he's warming up because he was, you know, kind of in this work and a little, you know, kind of standoffish at first, but it warmed up to us throughout the day. And at one point they needed everybody in a shot except for Gene Hackman. And this actor, Bumper Robinson, and me. And everybody leaves, and it's Gene and the two of us. And you can, I look over at Bumper, and I can tell he's stewing because he's thinking what I'm thinking. We have this one moment to ask Gene Hackman anything. This is our golden opportunity. And I'm sitting there thinking, maybe I ask him, maybe I ask him about the conversation, the, the, the symbolism of the jacket and the conversation. What did that, I really, you know. And Bumper Robinson goes, uh, hey, uh, Mr. Hackman, um, uh, what was that movie you were in about um, about Bonnie and Clyde? Oh no! <laughs> and Gene Hackman looks at him and he goes, is it, "It's Bonnie and Clyde." And Bumper goes, "Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right." Oh my god! And I was like, well, "I'm not asking my question now. You've ruined Bumper. it." Bumper, that was our one shot, man. Oh my God. What was that movie you were in? <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde. What was that movie you were in? Oh, oh man. Oh my yeah. God. And then, but it was awesome to watch him talk about acting and how he just had a very grounded, not precious viewpoint of it, which is, which is cool. You know? That's awesome. You know, it's yeah. funny as we speak, he's doing a signing that he never does. He hasn't. And my friend called me and said, hey, I'm kind of doing the signing with him. Wow. Is there anything you want signed? Whoa. So I ordered a Hoosiers poster and Way a Superman go, poster yeah. and sent it to him. And he's getting him signed for me. Dude, that is huge. I mean, Lex From Luther Indiana? has to have a Lex Luthor. I mean, you got it. Dude, that is huge. Right? And I'm from Indiana. Yes. Come on, man. Oh, this is so great. Got to do it. So that's going to be a new post. Hopefully, if it gets it done, hopefully, you know, they'll have it shining in here. I'll I'll take oh, some poster man. off, but what's the other Gene Hackman story? Oh, the other one was um, maybe I shouldn't be telling this one. Well, you don't have to. No, it's okay. Uh, I'm not cutting it, so you you better know. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's about okay. So yeah, he's old. It's, it's he's fine. old. No, but it's about another actor. So it's he was. Fine. So to give a name, I won't. I won't name the name. But he. But somebody was. We were sitting. He had warmed up throughout the day, and somebody said, "Hey, you worked with the so and so, right?" And he, and he gave. He goes. Uh, they were like, "Oh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good experience." And he goes, hey, "He's a big Hollywood movie star," and he shined his Gene Hackman smile about you know this person, and we were like, "Well, what was it?" And he goes, "Well, you know, how far are we from the trailers? You know, like what a hundred, a hundred feet." This actor chose to that they 
they they were you know they're like yeah that person's method right and he's like oh, i don't know what it is but it's a waste of time you know we'd be you know we were 100 feet from the trailer and she'd call to get her horse you know to so the she she could drive her horse to set 100 feet and uh i remember one time she she came up to me and she said you know um gina i got this scene and um I'm coming down the hill on this horse and I gotta, I gotta, you know, my character was, uh, you know, abused at a young age. And, uh, you know, that's what made her such a, so gruff and, you know, so cold and distant and, uh, and, you know, so I, I gotta, you know, there, that's all the things. And she proceeded to tell me about the whole character history for about five minutes. She said, so, so what do you think? And I said, well, hell, if you can tell all that by, coming down this hill i'd really like to see that <laughs> and i thought wow that's yeah that's gene Hedman oh my you. god that is just like yeah just do the job just do the, do job, the job and go home <laughs> <laughs> all right real quickly this is fast rapid fire this is shit talking with sam yeager shit talking with sam yeager top tier patrons get to ask these questions go to patreon.com slash inside of you i love you guys you make the show happen here we go these are quick rapid fire ready little lisa do you have any pet peeves pet peeves pet peeves shoot oh man so many <laughs> so many uh uh pet peeves uh oh uh no 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 i was gonna say something about this is the only a thing that an actor uh knows but if, sometimes people come up to you and they're like i can't i just can't figure out where i know you from uh, and if that's yeah. the case don't 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 ask yeah. until you know don't ask until you know because, it's uncomfortable yeah somebody like i don't want to give you my resume a flight attendant did it on a flight and she goes i'm just trying to figure out what it is i know you from and i said this is a this is a lose lose scenario for me because you're gonna sound like a dipshit. because I'm I'm either gonna, parenthood no nope. nope not nope. that I'm gonna go through everything you're gonna say no and then I'm just gonna walk off feeling pretty dejected and I, it's just I just Google me just, yeah here's just my Google name me. just just do <laughs> how about that uh, Bob K how is it to work with how was it to work with Craig T Nelson awesome awesome very oh, love- very funny charismatic change the change the shape of our show and and some of the you know uh he's just a fascinating guy yeah that's another guy i got so many stories about oh my god you know, I love he's come those. such a long way but i just love him dearly yeah. karina and what's the best lesson you learned in this industry hmm uh just come as yourself you know you, you try and you spend so much time trying to be something else, trying to figure out what they want. But if you just figure out what you want and who you are, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a lofty question. But no, I know. think it's true. I think it's like I, I, at a young age, I wanted to be Gary Oldman. I want to emulate yeah. Gary Oldman. I wanted to, and then somebody's like, we, there's a Gary Oldman. He's right got there. that. Yeah. That's He's him. Gary Oldman. Yeah. Be yourself. Totally. Totally. They, they don't want another whatever. Yeah. And you're not going to be another. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what's refreshing is when you don't apologize for it. You say, well, this is who I am. And, you know, as you know, you come up with like a, I have like trading cards of coping, you know, that I flip through every time I don't get a job. And it's like one of them says, yeah, well, fuck you guys. If that's your choice, go to hell. <laughs> or I flip the card again and it's like, oh, well, it just wasn't meant to be. And a lot of times, you know, it's like the best card to flip is like, hey, it's not me. It's not meant to be. The next one will Godspeed and just kind of make peace with it. Good attitude. Good attitude, Ryan. 99 more. <laughs> Any fun stories to share from Eli Stone? And did you enjoy breaking into song and dance? I did enjoy breaking into song and dance, especially not knowing that that, that was going to be something we were going to do on that show as much as we did. Uh, man, I loved, I loved, that was another show I loved working with, you know, Johnny Lee Miller, who's just a tenacious, fantastic actor, Victor Garber, Garber. And uh, man, that, I think that was, I, I, I don't have any specific stories, but I just loved doing it, you know. Uh, it was my first series regular role, and you always remember that awesome yeah dude this has been awesome this has been great man yeah Thank i, you lo- so I much love you being me. so open and 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 just fun and telling me about your life and how it all works for you and how you know it's uh 
I didn't know you. I know. I, I just it's didn't amazing. know each other. We have mutual friends like Erica Christensen and, oh, you know, who's the best? Who lives she right is. around the corner from me. Does she? Yeah, she lives like a block over. Oh, man, if I didn't She's been on a couple times. Has she? Yeah. Oh, man, she's adorable. And I who just else from that her. show? Dax was on, on the show, on the podcast. Oh, good. Um, dude, I'd love to get Craig T. Nelson. He probably wouldn't do it. He doesn't do a lot of these, does he? I, he may be in Hawaii. Is that where he lives? I think so, sometimes. Do yeah. you see him or hear from him ever? Every once in a while, I'll ring him up, but yeah. You'll, just, you'll call him or you'll text him? I'll call him, yeah. And he'll answer? Hey, yeah. how you doing, Sam? I try to give him a call every year he goes, uh, he has his uh, uh, AA, you know, uh, anniversary. And so I call him up. Congratulations. And congratulate him. Oh, uh, why yeah. you congratulate me? I just was drinking last week. I <laughs> fucked it all right. up. That's right. <laughs> the stories he tells from those golden era, I oh, mean, are God. unbelievable. I'd love to hear so many stories from Poltergeist. Oh my God! Remember when he does this thing in front of the, in front of his wife? He pushes out his stomach. He goes before, after, before, after. <laughs> He's so before, great. After the stomach. He's great. He's great. Uh, thanks for allowing me to be inside of you today, man. This has been awesome. I feel like I met a new friend. Uh, likewise, man. The fact that you're wearing a Carpe Diem shirt, my wife, there my mother, my mother buys me stationery because again, Dead Poet Society was my favorite movie growing up. Oh every, yeah. Every year I'll get some piece of stationery or something that has that. So I was like, oh. That guy gets me. My grandmother comes to me. What is on your shirt? Ah. Oh, it's carpe diem. What is that? <laughs> Seize the day. What? <laughs> it's it's Latin. It's don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, what the hell is this? <laughs> All right, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks for having me, Michael. What a treat. Thank you, Sam, for being so open and sweet and kind. You're a talented man. Love to have you back sometime. Tell us what you thought of Sam. If you didn't know him. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and listen to the intro for all the stuff that's coming up in, in our world, if, so I don't have to repeat it. And thank you to my special patrons who make the show possible. They give back so much. I couldn't do the show without them. Uh, go to patreon.com slash inside of you. Join today. Help the podcast out. It's the holidays, and now you got a lot to think about, but we're trying to keep this thing afloat. I see you guys at cons. I love you. Thanks for the support. I just saw a bunch of my patrons in um, San Francisco. Cool. And uh, some of them are going to Columbus. I'll, I'll see Raj and a bunch of people in Pitt, Pittsburgh. It's such a joy to see people who listen to the podcast, this one in Talkville, support it, support me. And uh, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. I'll just say that. Right now, it's time for the top tier shout outs for patrons. Here we go, Ryan. Nancy D, Leah S, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert P, Jason W, Sophie M, Kristen K, Raj C, Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Kimberly E, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 More, Santiago M, Chad D, W, w. Liam P, Janine R, Maya P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Chris H, Dave H, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, correct, top of the T, Tom N, Liliana A, Talia M, Betsy D, Chad D. This L. is Chad D. Okay. Chad L. <sighs> Come on. Dan N. Big Stevie W. <sighs> Angel M. Rhiannon C. Corey K. Deb Nexon. Michelle A. Jeremy C. Gabinator. Mm -hmm. David C. John B. Brandy D. Camille S. Joey M. Eugene and Leah. Nikki K. Nikki G. Corey. Patricia. Heather L. Jake B. Megan T. Mel S. Hi, Blanche. Blanche is in the room. You can hear her jingling. Orlando C. Caroline R. Christine S. Sarah S. Eric H. Shane R. Emma R. Andrew M. Zatoichi 77. Oracle, Karina N, Amanda R, Amanda S, Jen B, Kevin E, Stephanie K, Lena 82, Jorel, Billy S, ADHD, Rocks, Todd. You heard that. Luna R, uh, again, I'm not going to say it, but uh, that's it. The patrons rock. You guys rock. I hope you stick around. I hope you don't get bored with us. And uh, I, I hope you to con continue to support the podcast. And that's all I'll say. That's it? That's about all I could say. That's it? Yeah. You're biting your tongue? I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> uh, Ryan, yeah. thank you for always being here. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, it's a treat. Um, so that's it from myself, Michael Rosenbaum, in the Hollywood Hills of California. And I'm Ryan Tejas. Also wearing, it's Black Hoodie Day. Just uh, if you're listening. Oh. Apparently it's Black Hoodie Day. It's Black Hoodie Day, Blanche. It's just the kind of day it is. Oh, my dog's so cute. I love her. Oh, hey, a little wave to the camera. <laughs> We love you. Thanks for listening in. Of course, as always, Ryan, give her a nice pet. Hello. Look how cute that is, Ryan. Hello. Little Blanche. Hello. Always be good to yourself. Always be, be good, good to yourself, right? Always be good to yourself. Always be good to yourself. We love you. We'll see you next week. 
spread the word.